we know that the operating system is responsible for using the hardware efficiently and this hardware could be related to the main memory it could be related to the bus cycles or to the processor but in terms of the hard disk or the secondary storage so for disk drives in terms of disk drives using hardware efficiently means having a fast access time to that particular address on the disk and the disk bandwidth so when we talk about the access time that means if we want to access a particular block on the disk then there are two things that are involved one is the seek time and one is the rotational latency and we have discussed both seek time in the and the rotational latency in my previous video on hard disk so if we want to have a fast access time we need to minimize the seek time so we know that the seek time is the time that is taken by the read write head to move over a particular cylinder or track and minimizing the seek time means that the seek distance should be minimized if seek distance is minimized then the seek time would automatically be minimum the second thing is disk bandwidth so what is disk bandwidth so the bandwidth is defined in terms of the total number of bytes that are transferred from the disk divided by the time of completion of the last transfer of the block so the time at which the first request for service had come and the time when the last block logical block is transferred so whatever is that difference in time so the total time taken from the first request to the last transfer that is the total time that has been taken and so the total number of bytes that have been transferred divided by that total time this will give us the bandwidth of the disk and it could be in bits per second so it could be to the tune of 1 gigabit per second and so on now there can be many sources of the disk input output request this request for getting data from the disk can be from system processes that means from the operating system or it could be from the user processes this input output request it will include whether this request is for an input or for an output so let's say this is the main memory or the ram and the processor is here and we have the disk so we have the system bus now so if there is a transfer if the microprocessor has sent in a request for a particular on behalf of a particular process so let's say the process was running with the microprocessor and this process p1 it wants some data from this hard disk this is the hard disk drive and the operating system has sent this request so when this request has come now this request will include whether this is an input or output mode that means it is a read operation or a write operation also there will be a, like a pointer to the open file that means whichever file is being referred to so there will be a pointer or you can say the logical address of that particular file so if the file is kept over here and it will not be kept continuously but it will be kept in different sectors of that hard disk but the the pointer to that address will be given through this open file handle then there will be the memory address that means if let's say some data is being transferred from the main memory to the hard disk then from which address of the main memory this data is being transferred or if the data is being transferred from the hard disk to the main memory then where in the memory this data is to be written so this memory address of the main memory is also required so this is referring to read and write this is referring to the address on the disk and this is referring to the address of the main memory and then number of sectors to transfer that means how much data is to be transferred from the hard disk to main memory or from main memory to hard disk 
Now if a request has come, whether it is a read request or a write request, if the disk is idle, that means if it is not doing any work, then it will immediately start working on that I.O. request. But if this disk is busy, that means the request that has come up must now form a queue. So there is a request from process 1, maybe process P3 is also running and wants some request from the hard disk. So P3 will also send a request. So now all these requests will form a queue. And when a queue has formed, then some optimization algorithm can also be used. The disk controllers, which are the electronic devices which are available along with the hard disk drives, they are responsible for the management of the queue and the disk drive head scheduling. So what is the disk drive head? You can check my earlier video on the disk drive. It tells about how the head should move to go on a particular track. So this disk controller will decide the scheduling or how a particular request will be handled. And for this, for uh, taking care of a particular request, whatever logical block address has been sent. So this logical block address is the, the block, ad block address of the file, but to which particular sector it is being mapped to that is not known to the operating system that is available with the disk controller. So the, the address that is sent is the logical block address and the disk controller will see which sector it has to access to get this particular block. Now the goal of the disk scheduling that means how the requests have to be handled. So there could be a request for track number 78 and then a track number 93 or a track number 46. But how these requests have to be taken care of, that is the point of disk scheduling. And what will be the goal? That there should be fairness. That means all the processes or all the requests are being taken care of and there is no request which is lying pending. There should be some timeliness that means they, they, all these requests which are queuing up they should be handled in a timely manner and th we can apply some optimization like we can group together reads or writes that appear in a sequence because if we, there is sequential IO then the, the performance of the disk improves. The absolute knowledge of the head location and the actual block cylinder location is generally not possible. So only what is available is the logical block address. So the algorithms they can assume as an approximation only that if it is increasing logical block address, it might mean that the physical addresses on the disk are also increasing. And if the logical block addresses are close together, that means on the disk also they are in close proximity of each other. In this video, we are going to discuss the first come first served disk scheduling. So this is very similar to first in first out and this is the simplest form of disk scheduling. That means whichever request has come first, it will be handled first. Now this algorithm is fair because whichever request has come first, it is being handled first. So this is a uh, like a fair way of dealing it with uh, the request. But this kind of an approach usually does not provide a fast service. So let's assume that there is a disk queue and there is a request for IO to blocks on cylinders 98, 183, 37 and so on. As discussed in the earlier video, we are assuming that the outermost track is referred to as track 0 and it, the number goes on increasing as we move from outward to inward. So let's say the uh, first request is for 98. Let's say this is track number 98. So the first track request has come for this track. Then there is a request for a block on track 183. So 183 would obviously be inside 98 or inwards. So this would be 183, then 37 would probably here and so on. 
so that means now the read write head has to move first to 98 then it has to move to 188 183 and then it has to move backward to 37 because this is what we are doing is a first come first serve scheduling so this is our request that the blocks are on these cylinders 98 183 37 and so on and let's say that we are assuming that initially our read write head is at cylinder 53 so let's say it is at cylinder 53 somewhere over here the head is there so that means first is has to go to 98 because that is the first request then the request is for 183 so from 98 it has to go to 183 then from 183 it has to go to 30 37 and so on so this is the diagram that shows that how the disk head is going to move so first we are assuming that it is at 53 so it is at 53 it will first go to 98 then to 183 then 37 and so on so here is initially our head over here at 53 so for 53 it moves to 98 this is the cylinder 98 this is the track 98 and if you see what is the number of cylinders that it has traveled so 98 minus 53 which gives us 45 so it has traveled 45 cylinders then from 98 it is moving to 183 so it has traveled 85 cylinders then it goes to all the way back to 37 outer outer tracks so from over here it is moving 146 cylinders 183 minus 37 that gives you 146 from 37 it now goes to 122 so 85 cylinders 122 again back to 14 so 108 cylinders then 14 to 124 so that gives you 110 cylinders then 124 to 65 59 cylinders and then 65 to 67 2 cylinders so if we count the number of the cylinders that it has traveled so 45 plus 85 plus 146 and so on this gives us a total head movement of six, 640 cylinders and we can see that how this head is moving back and forth had this now so from 183 it has moved all the way back to the outermost track of 37 once it has gone to the outermost track 37 again it moves to an inward track of 122 again back to an outermost track of 14 so we can see too much of head movement that is going on back and forth uh, on the disc and so this while it is dealing with the request in a first come first serve manner but it is not a very efficient way of disk scheduling we will look at other scheduling algorithms in our next video